Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, a couple seconds off the hook here, but that's all right. We're here now. This is Pastor Randy Scott with Iron Faith Fellowship Church with our morning tidbits on this beautiful Monday morning here in Wilmington, Delaware. It's pouring down rain, kind of cold and damp out. But uh, as we were talking about earlier uh, in our prayer group this morning, uh, you know, just reminds us of times of refreshing. God sending that refreshing. Now, some people say, well, thank goodness it's rain. It could be snow. Well, I'm a little disappointed that it's not snow. Uh, I'm one of them crazy people. I love snow. So uh, there you are. I better want to welcome everybody this morning. Like I said, hope everybody's doing well. Hope you're staying dry. Good morning, everybody. And uh, as you can see in the ribbon down there, never forget. And, uh, you know, a lot of people take that as, uh, you know, uh, 9-11. Uh, you know, when the towers were hit or Pearl Harbor uh, and those kind of things. And that's not what I'm really going to be talking about this morning. You know, we must never forget. And I'm talking to believers, uh, certainly uh, first and foremost. Uh, we must never forget what Christ has done for us. And you know what? We tend to do that sometimes when we go along in our daily lives, don't we? You know, we uh, we're so, there's so many things that we're challenged to never forget. Uh Never forget this. Never forget that. And, and uh, you know, and a lot of that stuff, when they say never forget, uh, it means don't allow it to happen again. You know, we're never going to let that happen. The Pearl Harbor will never happen again. Uh, uh, those kind of things. So uh, and that's not what I'm talking about. You know, uh, Jesus paid the price once and for all, but we should never forget what he has done for us the sacrifice he made, what he went through for us. And we, again, I think we have, I think the church has forgotten uh, exactly what, how much he has loved us and the great sacrifice he made for us. Uh, and we take those things for granted. Sometimes we really do. Uh, uh, and we got to be reminded, don't we? We got to have those gentle reminders uh, uh, what Jesus has done for us. And yesterday in the message, you know, I talked about being in the word and getting back in the word and trusting the word alone, because that's what we've been given uh, as a guideline for our lives. And uh, if we get in the word of God and we read it as if it's written personally to us, which it has been, you know, God's love letter to us, but it's also life's instructions for us as believers, because our lives have changed. We cannot go along with the world. We can't do what the world does and think we're going to find joy and rejoicing uh, in those things. And I'm not telling you not to be patriotic. I'm not telling you to do that. You know, I served this country. My son serves this country. We have people that serve this country uh, and very patriotic. But you know something? We put more emphasis in uh, our patriotism uh, uh, than what we do in our relationship with the Lord. And we wonder, why aren't people being saved? Why aren't we having revival? Why isn't things breaking out? It's because we're not where we need to be. And we have forgotten what Jesus has done for us. Uh, you know, uh, I love what Jesus says, you know, greater love is no man than this one lay down his life for his friends. And, uh, you know, people have done that in many ways. Uh, missionaries, let's talk about missionaries that have laid down their lives uh, uh, for Christ. Uh, uh, and people thought that was the dumbest thing, you know, for them to do, you know, uh, to go into the jungles and the highways and the byways and to die, uh, for no reason. They did die for a reason. They died for Christ. And in most cases out of their lives, people came to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, do we live our lives that way? We must never forget. We need to be reminded and the Lord laid that on my heart today. Uh, I, I've gotten complacent. Uh, you know, uh, I get involved in life sometimes, uh, even as a pastor, we get hooked up in things and we get looking at different things uh, going on in this world and we get trapped up and we get busted in those conversations, those debates, uh, that everybody's having. Uh, fortunately that's not been the case with me. Uh, I've probably gotten more side debates, but I'm not going to get into big debates on Facebook. You know, that's not the place to do it. You want to debate with me? Let's come face to face. Let's reason together. Okay. Bring the word of God. We'll sit down. Uh, but I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to make it easy for you. Okay. To do it on Facebook. I'm not going to be easy for you to do it on Twitter, uh, or YouTube. You know, uh, if you want to know where I am, private message me or whatever you do, I'll give you my address. We'll get together. We'll hook it up. Okay. 
but don't be brave on Facebook, uh, challenging people with the word, you know, be willing to come face to face. It's like anything else, you know, uh, if you think you're so right, uh, then you need to be able to come face to face and meet with somebody, uh, uh, instead of, uh, you know, writing some comments, ugly comments or whatever kind of, because Christians have been ugly to each other through a lot of this stuff that's going on. And it's primarily because they've been distracted. And I don't want you distracted, folks. I really don't. And that's why I, I try on this uh, uh, tidbits and try to be obedient to the Holy Spirit to just talk about Christ and talk about what's going on in your life and to, for us to come to use some points uh, to keep us from being distracted and one thing that keeps us from being distracted is never forgetting the price that was paid for us. I'm going to go to Isaiah 53 uh, for this. Some people are probably thinking uh, uh, Matthew or Luke or one of those. But I'm going to Isaiah 53 because what Jesus was going to go through was prophesied in times past, a few hundred years before. Uh, uh, already, uh, some of the things he was going to experience for us. And some people think, you know, uh, we know the cross experience. But what led up to the cross he was spit on. He was beat upon. Uh, he was ridiculed. He was belittled. He was degraded. And all those things he went through, he never raised his voice. He didn't call down legions of angels. He saw us. He saw us. And that's what we can't forget. And we do. We do. I'm sorry. That's the challenge out there. We do forget. But we can't forget. We need to be reminded. And you're being reminded this morning. Man, we have a Savior that is above all a savior that created all everything you see his hand is in. And if we'd never forget that and we see him in everything, we'll be distracted by nothing. Did you hear what I said? If we see him in everything, we'll be distracted by nothing or no one. Let me add that in there, but let's go to Isaiah 53. I'm going to read verses uh, three through five. And uh, there's more here, but I'm going to read just these three verses. Uh, if you want to, uh, I mean, that would be a challenge. Go to Isaiah 53 and read it. Uh, and then go to the, the New Testament and follow up. And you see how uh, prophecy came to be, that Jesus fulfilled these prophecies uh, about himself. Okay, 53, starting in verse 3, Isaiah 53, verse 3. Now listen to this. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for what? For our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Let me go on to verse 6. We all like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Can you imagine? Think about that. Sometimes you cannot wrap your head around that, that God laid it all, all of our iniquities, all of our sin, all of those things he laid upon Christ on that cross. He took it all, took it all without complaint. And all he said was, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Wow. I'm just humbled. I'm just humbled this morning. Folks, pray you are also. Uh, I pray this spoke to your hearts. I pray it challenges you. When we talk about never forget, first thing in our minds and hearts, we, we should never forget the price that was paid for us. I don't forget the price that was paid for our freedoms. I, I don't. I don't. Uh, I still don't. I honor our people who serve us. Uh, in every single way, all these young people that go out before us. But you know what? That still can't take the place of what Jesus Christ did for us. They are fighting for our freedoms. Jesus Christ fought for our eternity. Wow. <laughs> wow. You know, let that let that drive home. Amen, Margie. Are we worthy? Are we worthy? I love that. Uh, are we worthy? You know, when Jesus comes, he's going to find find faith uh, on the earth. Uh I'm just just humbled. But you know, that's what the Holy Spirit wanted me to speak to you guys about this morning. Hope it was helpful. Read Isaiah 53 and be reminded uh, of the one thing we should never forget. And you know what? Sadly to say, we forget the other things too. We do. We get to a place where we just take life for granted. We take everything for granted. Uh, but when things get tough, all of a sudden we're reminded like, wow, 
you know, this is what I should have been doing, you know, but right now you can do that. You can stop. You can turn to the Lord and, you know, say, Lord, forgive me for, for being distracted. Forgive me for putting priorities in those things that don't, that don't really matter. You know, Lord, I want my family to be raised up to know you. I want my uh, spouse saved. I want, you know, all those things that go along with this thing. Uh, we can't give in. We can't give up. And man, I'll tell you something. There's nothing, there's nothing like that solid relationship with the Lord. You know, because folks, the times are coming. And I'm going to throw this in there and I'm going to close in prayer. The times are coming and they're getting going to get worse. I keep saying this. Why do I say this? Because the scripture says so. We've got to trust in the word of God. But if we're not preparing our hearts, we're not being strengthened and built up in our families, our households, in our fellowships. Man, we're going to be in some trouble. We're going to be in some trouble. Don't want you there. So if you're listening today, get in the word of God. Get in there. Build that relationship up. Be restored. But never forget what Jesus did for us. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We bless you for this day. This is a day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we sing out hallelujahs as we're reminded of how much you truly loved us, how much you truly love us now that you make a way that you suffered so greatly. We can't even imagine. I don't know of anybody that would suffer that way today. That could be beaten. It could be spit on for no reason at all. And keep their peace. And keep their peace. Lord, this time that's coming upon us, this Christmas season, we are reminded that you came, the first advent, that you came as a child. But Father, you came to die. You were born to die for a sinful world, an ungrateful world, a world that lives in complacency, a world that lives with uh, a heart of ingratitude. Father, turn our hearts around. Father, turn our hearts towards home. There are people out there right now dying and going to hell every single day, Father, because we are, as believers, being caught up in so many other things. Father, we need to be seed planters. No matter what we're doing, whether it's this tidbit thing, Lord, no matter what we're doing, we need to be seed planters. We need to share this gift that we have been given because we've got it undeserved. We didn't deserve the gift that we've been given, but we got it. And Lord, it's because of your grace, your mercy alone, nothing we could have done. So Father, speak to hearts, I pray. Transform, renew, refresh, challenge, convict. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Hope that was helpful. Jesus paid it all. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Boy, long list this morning. But uh, love you all. I truly, truly do. And uh, we will see you tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., for some more morning tidbits. Come ready to hear a little bit of the word of God. Love you all. Have an awesome, blessed day. And Amanda McCandless is on here. Uh, I, I'm jealous and I shouldn't be, but you guys got snow out there making snowmen and we're getting poured on. I don't know if that's fair or not, but praise God, you guys got some snow. I enjoyed looking at those pictures. And uh, But again, good to see everybody. I'm teasing people now, but uh, don't want to take a lot of time. I'm going to get off here tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. for some more morning tidbits. Be blessed. Don't stress. Give God the mess. He wants to carry it for you. See ya. See ya. See ya.